Hello, welcome to Ring Takes here, episode 28. Of course, I'm joined by Brian and Lewis. As always, thanks you guys for joining me. Um it's a in this one, we're gonna be touching on Jay Uso. We're gonna be going over Jay Uso quitting WWE. Um, a little bit of a raw recap in the state of women's wrestling. Um, but Brian, first you can take the floor uh to uh talk about AEW and CM Punk. Okay. This is this is really about the coverage, the the media coverage of CM Punk since he's been back in AEW and, and since uh, Collision has started. Week after week, whether it's on the dirt sheets or whether it's you know some somehow it's being referenced on AEW or programming, you know the the stories that have been coming out about about CM Punk especially the ones that have come out this week have been getting very frustrating, frustrating and annoying. Uh, I think it was reported uh, uh, this mm-hmm. week um, that uh, he got into a uh, argument with uh, Dolph Ziggler's uh, brother, Ryan Nemeth, who was on the roster, who was there for, for collision. <coughs> because he had tweeted yeah. out that punk, that, that punk was a, uh, was soft yeah. after uh, his, uh, his ESPN interview. And then, and then that conference, they said that confrontation happened. Then they said he got into another confrontation with a Jungle Boy about about a, a spot that Jungle Boy wanted to wanted to use uh, involving glass that that, that punk that 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 uh, punk wasn't a fan of or or I don't even know what the story is on that. Um, and then and then there's additional additional information. I wouldn't want punk. to do that either. <laughs> but, but, but but my point but my point is okay. And this goes back to whatever the hell happened happened at uh, all all out a couple of years ago. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on besides the people that work in the company. All right, I don't care about about insiders. I don't care about people you talk to. For all you know, the people that the people that you're talking to are people who have absolutely no fucking clue either, and just feeding you info to, to put on the inter- internet. All right, every <laughs> so when, like when I hear Dave Meltzer. I mean, I, we all know um, uh, Meltzer's uh, credibility sometimes can be shaky. Where like he'll have, like maybe maybe f- half of it right, but then the other half of it is completely wrong, which kind of throws everything off. So, but his but he, he can be credible credible sometimes. But whenever I hear him him reporting reporting on CM Punk, and it's just like, dude, how how the hell do how the hell do you know for sure what the, what the hell is going going on over there? No, nobody knows for sure. Nobody knows what's going on besides the people that are there. And I'm just, I'm just sick and tired of seeing all these reports. Mm-hmm. And it's like, then I, it's like you guys aren't even giving this man a chance to at least try to make up for what what the hell happened happened years ago. It's like, it, it's like him coming, him coming back is so bad that you got to constantly report all this, all this negative stuff at, in an attempt to get, to get him away again. It's like it's like you're not even giving him a chance, and he's and he's the top draw in the damn company right now. So I don't, I don't understand I don't understand it, and it was frustrating to watch. I mean, it's frustrating to read, and I, I, I'm just I'm just tired of it. I just want I I just want I just want the CM Punk thing to work so AEW can continue to grow, and it's 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 constant it's constant negativity. It's just frustrating. Yeah. So for me. Um, I mean, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, for me, when Punk was coming back, I was like over the mountain. I was like, because, you know, I saw what CM Punk did before he, he left and for him to be gone all that time. I was just like, you know what? Maybe he just rub people the wrong way. And, you know, he's a, hey, well, he does works, but, you know, there was also clearly the stuff that was going on backstage that we knew, kind of knew, didn't know, whatever. Um, but then him coming back and like all this stuff, it's just like, okay, was all the stuff from back then kind of true? Like, is he just really difficult mm-hmm. to work with? Because you know, at first it was like, oh, you know, he's getting he's getting along great with talent, blah blah blah. But then they're like, well, this dude's winning all the time, so he's not willing to put people over. Um, you know, just like how we always read stuff everywhere. And then, you know, the whole thing at all in or the, the media scrum thing happened, which mm-hmm. 
I think, you know, like Brian said, we don't really know what happened. It could have happened. It could have been bullshit. It could have just been a scuffle, but, you know, people just blew it out of proportion to this big fucking brawl thing and whatever. My thing, my perspective, just from the fact that they're not even interacting with each other is obviously something did happen with them. But now, again, mm-hmm. seeing Puck after shooting on, P- on Hangman Page and stuff like that, like, it's just like, are we still on this whole like talking shit about people? Like, are we not fucking adults? Is like now AEW is just like I feel like just getting more and more synonymous with just drama and backstage bullshit than the actual like storylines that are going on. Because it's like all we keep WCW. hearing is <laughs> all we keep hearing is about punk this, <laughs> this and that. People aren't happy. Tony Khan, Tony Khan, Tony Khan, and it's just like, yo, you got your biggest pay per view, and nobody's talking about the storylines that are going in. You know, it's just okay, like I will. Okay, I will. I will. I will say though, in defense of Hangman Adam Page, I didn't. I didn't agree with with, with the promo that punk that punk cut. I mean, it was cut, it was almost like saying mm-hmm. like, yeah, legally I can't talk about the elite, but. I can talk about you all I want. So let me take out the frustration that I could use against them and, t- and take it out and take it out even more on you in, in that sense. And I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. In the and this is what I mean. It, it like shows, it somewhat shows his pettiness. And this, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, we don't know what's going on. But when he does something like that, I feel like it just dumps more on like, oh, well, this is all, we already knew all this. This is who he is. This is like, what he's actually about or whatever. I don't know. It's just like, and that's why I wasn't even that excited when he was coming back. I was just like, I mean, yeah. And, and at the same, and at the same time, it, it was like, okay, we knew, we knew something happened. We don't know what happened, but we knew exactly. something, we knew something happened. That's all anybody knew is that, is that something happened. And these were the people that were involved and something happened. We don't, we don't, but we don't know. But something. so this is the thing about how I feel about CM Punk. Like at this point with Meltzer and his well, his reports and stuff like that, it's either hit or miss, right? Like half of it could be true, half of it could be wrong. He could just be trying to be the be the first person to report the information or whatever the case would be, not get all the information or whatever the case might be. But the way CM Punk has been presented, the way CM Punk, we know about CM Punk, most of it's probably going to be true, right? Like we hear all the stories about him being difficult to work with, all these other things. And I feel like the scrum that happened between him and the elite, their AEW is kind of playing on it. Like we're not going to run away from it. We're going to address it, even though we can't legally technically talk about it, but we're not going to run from it. And I feel like that's doing a little bit more harm than good. It probably would have been better to actually do the brand split, actually try to do that. And then have punk be over here, have the elite be over here. And you can probably build this up, but we're continuing continuously getting all these reports that are saying CM punks, this, this is that now we're getting Tony Khan. It looks like everything about this company is dysfunctional that you hear about like an indie show or something in the like that's not professional on this level and these are the signs that it's showing that and it's looking bad before they're all in and then they're going to have all out and i feel like another thing too is that they didn't capitalize off bringing these guys back like i wouldn't have brought these guys back if there wasn't going to be some type of storyline or have something that's actually going to build up like let's actually get like even like edge and matt hardy let's get a payoff from this where it builds yeah, our company, easily takes us to the, the next biggest, level. Maybe pulls yeah, easily could have been the biggest event of the match. year. Easily, exactly. Have all not, those people, but the fact not, that you and that's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. That they're all separated. You can't even get to that. So yeah. now looking at that, you're looking at the work that Adam Cole and MJF are doing, basically carrying all in, all out, going into yep. those sections. And it's like, what else does ADW really have right now? And it's like the thing that they need. They can't even address it because these guys can't even get on the same page. Like Tony Khan's not on the same page. CM Punk's not on the same page. Now you got the Elite not even on the same page. Adam Hangman Page is not on the same page. So you're getting all these different avenues that should be like, okay, guys, if we're going to make this work, if we're going to continue to build this, we need all you guys to work together. And as Brian has been saying for the past couple months, these guys can't even get in the same room and on the same page together to put on a good wrestling show. I mean, so, I, I mean, even, according even, according even to Punk, on he's, he's tried to reach out, but there, but the elite attorneys are telling are telling them now we can't we can't talk right, we can't speak. 
So and this is my thing. Why is it? Why is it all so legally restricted? It's like this is within the. Aren't they vice presidents? Aren't they vice presidents? Aren't they vice presidents? EVPs. Aren't they vice presidents of AEW? Yeah. So like, what does that even matter? Like, you guys are in control. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. It's like, are you telling me like these guys guys are are in control? So why is are these guys literally suing each other? They're like, oh no, you can't talk to this person. You can't talk about the events that transpired. It's just like. Some shit is really going on. For, this should not have gone okay. to some legal shit where they're like, oh, nobody can talk about it. Like, what? Like, we've all heard of fights happening or people punching yeah, each other on WWE and yeah, it's never been broke. some, like, legal <laughs> bullshit, you know? Like, like, you're broke. It happens, bro. People don't, It's the locker room. It's, people are going to argue. That's like, thing. Thing. That's that's thing. People want to be on top. Like, yo, least, it's, the ne- it's the nature of the locker at, room. At least in the WWE, at least in the WWE, WWF, we heard somebody got beat up. Like, there's mm-hmm. a legitimate story. Like, <clears throat> this person got their ass kicked. This guy got their up. We still don't know what happened with that situation. So, I mean, that's just the loophole that AEW hasn't been good at covering up, like making like everybody get on the same page, making building the amends between everybody. And like, yo, we got a show to run. <laughs> at the end of the day, like even even though Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels ended terribly, like with the Montreal screw job. Yeah. But those months before, like, hey, we're getting we're getting our show on TV. Yeah. We're building this up. Like, there's yeah. nothing of the sort that we feel like we feel like this is gonna build to a match, like this is gonna be at all in, all out, like we're gonna get something there. And it's like we're not even getting that. We're just getting reports of like now it's just a watered down effect, like, oh, I don't like CM Punk from Dolph Ziggler's brother like like okay you don't like CM Punk he didn't want to do a spot like there's plenty of wrestlers that have done that in time yeah. and now it just seems like what Brian says like everything about Punk is just negative and it's like like there's got to be a way to resolve this like overall with the company overall with CM Punk and it's like it's not happening it doesn't look like it's happening mm-hmm. yeah but that's what I'm saying like is it is this just like a CM Punk effect is it just like has his presence you know, because obviously he has people like FTR who are cool with him, but then it's like, you know, now you're hearing, like today I was reading, oh, there was, okay, the thing with um, Ziggler's brother, then there was something about like Christopher Daniels, and then there was uh, somebody else is like, now you got producers and shit like that. It's just like, yo, you're telling me that everybody, like you got all the elite and Kenny and Hangman, and then you got all these other people is like, at what point are you like, do we still keep this guy or are we actually going to Build up our company because it's no. creating so that's, much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's, that's, that's where, that's where keep, we have to keep him. Like I said, he's the biggest draw. They <sighs> yeah. have, they need him. That's, that, that's why. That's why the situation is so frustrating because you want to because in, in their mind sometimes I know they think the locker room thinks probably like oh oh we, we don't want him here we don't we don't need him but it's like but we really but we really do. Because he's a because he's such a big big draw I, or an up and coming company. Let me say this. Let me let me let me address that part. Let me address that part. Let me address that part. The elite just resigned. Yeah. Right. Yep, like a did. week ago, right? Like two weeks ago, a week or two oh, ago, right? Yep. They resigned knowing that he's still there. So either his contract is coming. If it's this big of a problem, either his contract is coming up and ending at some point, and they just like let it end, and then we'll just let him like be a fish out of water and drag yeah. it out and move on without him. Or they know he's coming back, they know he's staying, they signed. And it's like you guys need to deal with it. <laughs> At that point, if you resigned, but, if you guys have a problem with this guy, and then you guys are the VP, EVPs, and all this other stuff, and, yeah, and in talks point. with Turner and all That's this stuff, and with point. Tony Khan and all this other yeah. stuff, you guys should be controlling everything. Exactly. And you're but not. A, so I mean, but this is like, the thing though. These guys are chance to have very true. But you know the the other thing though, you should have resigned. Yeah, you're right. But at at the same time, these guys are these guys are all still active wrestlers. So it's not like they're thinking like the Triple H's and the other people who have moved into these business, you know, board yeah. meeting type stuff. Yeah, that's that. You know, that, they're just like, hey, we're still we're still putting on great matches, and we're going to do this till the wheels fall off. So it's like maybe they're not even considering that whole mm-hmm. aspect. But my problem is, it's like you literally have the top, literally the top group. It doesn't even have to be group. These all of them are top guys. And they're all refusing to work with this man. It's like, so at what point are you gonna be like, yo, who are we even gonna have to work with Punk? <laughs> that's like, it's just like, who's, who's even gonna like, that's like Triple H. You know? That's like Triple H. 
That's like Triple H in the early 2000s, and everybody's like, we don't want to work with him because his position was Stephanie McMahon and Vince and all this stuff. We don't want to work with him. Can you imagine how that bad that would have been for the company? Like if, if Mick Foley, The Rock, Undertaker, Stone Kane, Cold, everybody, the Hardy yeah. Boy, like all these guys just said, we don't want to work. We don't want to work with Triple H. Can you imagine that? <laughs> like it would destroy the company. So it's like wow. in, in this situation, it's like whatever. Again, as I said before, if CM Punk is the bad guy that they say they resigned, they had no issues resigning. <laughs> so this should be yeah. over with. Like all that stuff with all these reports right. and stuff like but, that. But Daniel, Daniel, but to, but, but, to, Daniel, but to, ca- to counter that, to, to counter that, apparently yeah. I think the Bucks, I think the the Bucks specifically, they got issued like probably like the, the biggest contract that that a tag team has been been offered. Apparently, probably I think it's like millions. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. would would you take that money to to deal with that bullshit? I would. Oh yeah. No, but I, no, no, no. That, that's what I'm. That's what I'm addressing. If I'm taking the money, I'm working with CM Punk. <laughs> that that's just that's just me off the rip. Like if if I'm sitting, there, if they're if they're paying me all this money to work with this guy, shit, I'll do it. <laughs> like, they're not like, even working whatever with beef we have. We never, that's what I'm saying. But like that's what I'm saying. Like any fisticuffs that we might have had between each other, you put you put millions of dollars in front of me. I can bury the hatchet. <laughs> I can bury the hatchet. Like we can make that. Hey, work. Bret Hart didn't want to bury the hatchet. <laughs> so, many, so many guys in wrestling have done that. Eric Bischoff did that. Paul Heyman did that. Wait, wait, it's just like, wait, wait. Bret Hart. Bret Hart. Bret Hart was out. That was the thing. That's the difference with that. Bret Hart was out. He was already going to WCW. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that was the reason why that crumbled. But I'm pretty sure if Vince was able to give him that money. Which he should have done. It, it would have been. Should have been. Smart. He could. He couldn't yeah. pay him though. I, I thought <laughs> Vince, 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 Vince couldn't pay him because because this this was when they when they were um in the war with with, with WCW and struggling. NWO and they were getting they that were struggling financially and he couldn't afford to pay him so he had to tell him like yo this contract I just gave you this ten year deal I can't give this to you anymore so so I'll give you the option of, of negotiating with WCW or renegotiating renegotiating with us and then he went to WCW and gave him and WCW gave him that deal. That's what I th- that's what happened, mm-hmm. and that's that's how the mo- and he didn't he didn't want to drop the belt to Sean, and then they uh, screwed. Him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's how that happened. So that's how yeah. that happened. They actually went into the match and actually did it, but he got screwed. So was he I mean, thinking he was going to win like, and then just like vacate the title, basically? Yeah, that's that's exactly that's what, what, what he thought. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what he <laughs> yeah, thought he yeah, was going to yeah. do. He was going to he was going to beat beat Sean or DQ and then mm-hmm. give up the title the next night. But then Vince was like, oh, no, fuck all that. He can take mm-hmm. the title and go to WCW and embarrass the shit out of us. No, we're not letting that happen. No, yeah. not even not even, not even, even take the title. Not even take the title. My whole per- – and this is the reason why I'm like, okay. I, I didn't like that they screwed him, but I understood the line of thinking. Yeah. This guy just mm-hmm. beats your top star. He's still the champion, and then he drops the title. Let's say he gives the, the title back to Vince in his hands and then goes to WCW? What, what, what does that yeah. say about your company? Yeah, you put your chest on the and he jumped ship. Like, like, the title just vacated it and went to the other. Yeah, yeah. all that momentum. But yeah. WCW like, not even, not even, WCW not even like, not fuck not up the same, same way. Yeah, the same, the same thing that the same way he was booked. Uh, even if, even, even if that scenario had happened, he would have been booked the same way in WCW. <laughs> they they fumbled him so. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you guys watched the video I sent to you with Goldberg. In his time in WCW, I didn't get a to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they t- they touch on that. He touched um uh, that guy Brian Zane touches on that that point. <laughs> Bret Hart mm. being booked terribly. Hey, Bret Hart will never <laughs> never forgive Goldberg for that. Head never, no, no, no. Oh, oh, Bret Hart hates <laughs> you know, he hates Goldberg. Like, like it's, it's personal. Like, yeah. And Goldberg's like, yo, nah, I don't know how many bad. times I can apologize. Like, like yo, bro, like, bro, he wasn't trying to, he wasn't trying to hurt you. <laughs> it was an accident. Hey. No, that's great. I mean, it, but by I, the same time, know, that cost I mean, him, it cost him his career. Imagine how many more matches Bret Hart could have had if, if that yeah. didn't happen. I think the issue was that he continued wrestling after that match rather than taking a step off. Like, he kept wrestling after that for a little bit and then got hurt mm. again. And it was just like, he, he made it worse. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, that just sucks. <laughs> that just sucks. But ultimately, if I took all that money and I have the biggest draw next to me and I have to work with him, 
guess what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. But this, this is what I'm saying. What does it say about these guys that they're refusing to even like mediate or literally take the take this ball and like make it into the biggest fucking thing you can and make the most money? It's just like it's a reason. It's probably a reason why WWE stayed away. <laughs> that, that's my is probably all these little things that we talk about like this attitude stuff and like like that's not flying in wwe like you're either gonna do it or you're not or you're not gonna be here and that's how that's wwe true. handles their business mm-hmm. like if you're not gonna yeah, do the they'll, job they'll take then, people off real quick <laughs> yeah, yeah they don't care that's the thing about yeah. them that's the one thing i can give wwe credit <laughs> don't give a shit who you who you are nobody's bigger than the brand if Roman started the event, oh, they'll take right. the title off of him real quick. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I think nah, I think they would. Like, uh, like <laughs> Sasha, like Sasha, Sasha Banks and Naomi. We just saw it with them. Hey, you guys want to pout and go home? Stay home. <laughs> we'll let Michael your, we'll let your talk shit. Right. We'll do everything. <laughs> Yeah, that's an, and then and they waste no time addressing the bullshit. Like yeah, even with even with Stone Cold Steve Austin, the next the next week Vince was in the middle of the ring saying he took his ball and went home. Like yeah. all this stuff, like they don't waste no time with that shit. So like, was that when he had to face time. Brock? So we'll see what happens yeah, with AEW. Yeah, yeah, that's like, he, yeah, that's when he was booked to face Brock, and then he, yeah, he, that was for Brock that came to no show because uh-huh. he felt like that. Like and a then he was like, like yeah, you serve the bill. Yeah. And, he, and, by, and I'm just gonna say this: he he was right. <laughs> he was right. Stone Cold was right in that situation. Like he's a legend. Like he should have. I don't think he. Should, I don't think he should have even been in the King of the Ring. That's why I thought no. Stone Cold where he, he was. But I'm just like, at least at least let him lose on the pay per view. <laughs> at least let him lose on the pay per view. That was my it thing. A Monday Night Raw. Right? Right? Like, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it was on Raw. It was supposed. He was supposed to mm-hmm. lose on Raw. And he was like, I'm not losing on Raw. Like, I'm not going to get – Stone Cold was just worried about, like, the payout. Like, what what's the overall meaning behind this? Like, am I getting yeah. screwed? Like, no. Like, he was like, he's going to beat you clean. Like, what? You're basically burying him. Like, like I, I completely understand <laughs> it from both sides. Yeah. And, and, and on mm-hmm. top of that, Austin, Austin, yeah, like, Austin, you, Austin was in pain at the time, too, dealing with issues from his neck surgery. Like, his body was breaking down. He was frustrated yeah. with creative and all, all that mixed up into – what what Daniel just said, yeah, that's mm-hmm. why he was like, yeah, I'm not coming. He quit just like Jimmy, he like Jay Uso. Perfect segue. <laughs> hey, <laughs> which we're gonna get into right now. <laughs> Great segue, Lewis. We're gonna get into uh, uh, the fallout of SummerSlam here uh, with uh, Jimmy Uso basically coming out, basically explaining why, why Jimmy, why, <laughs> why did you screw over your brother? Why did you do this? And how do you guys feel about this? His this whole confrontation, Jimmy's explanation. How do you guys? Let's start there. What do you guys feel about his explanation? Because I love you, bro. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I didn't expect them to go that route. Um, It makes sense, but at the same time, no. And no, it 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 does make sense. Um, But the whole Jake. Quitting right after, I'm just like, what? I don't, I don't understand that part. Like, I get, like, you know, I'm, I'm fighting my cousin and my brother. Now I'm fighting my twin brother, so I can get, like, you know, all that frustration. Mm-hmm. And my family, fuck this. That's I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna keep fighting my family, mm-hmm. which makes sense. But again, and I, this is what I've been saying before. What is this leading to? If it's not, if it's not, if they're not going the route of Jimmy just saying, nah, I want to be tribal chief, and then they're gonna feud and then get a solo feud, and then everybody feuds. That kind of makes more sense. But this whole like him quitting, and then what's up with Jimmy, and then now who's Roman's facing? We don't know, he might be injured. It's just like I feel like everything's up in the air. Yeah, I um like I said, because I love you, bro. That's why I did it. <laughs> If I did it, you were gonna, you were gonna turn into him. <laughs> hey, it makes uh, sense. Wow. Um, this is definitely uh up up in the air right now. I mean, I almost think that they went in this direction because maybe they want to save the, the eventual clash between the Uso brothers for WrestleMania. 
And too with, long. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, too long. <laughs> yeah, too long. Lewis needs this to end. Lewis needs this to end by by, yeah. by Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, Christmas. And Lewis, and Lewis, Christ. And Lewis, Lewis based, so upon, based upon the logic, I think that was the, uh, <laughs> the psychology for how for um for why he stepped away. It's like yeah. first I'm first I'm fighting my cousin, now my little then my little brother, now I'm fighting my twin brother. Like like yeah, this this is too much. All, all this fight, all this fight in the family, it would be the perfect perfect reason to to step away in, in that aspect, but. My my question is, wh- where do, where does Jimmy go from here? Because realistically, you can't have him you can't have him realign with the bloodline, especially after the promo he just cut, pretty much saying that he didn't do he didn't do it for Roman Reigns at all. He's saying he didn't want he doesn't want Jay to be at Roman Reigns, so he can't he can't rejoin the bloodline. I mean, he can't you can't have him go go after Roman because the only result of that match is. Pretty much Jay coming back and costing costing Jimmy, and then that would lead into their one on one. And I don't think that's and I don't think that's going to happen until months and months down the line. Um, we still don't we still don't know if if Roman Reigns is indeed injured. What I would like to see now now that now that this storyline now that this storyline is kind of taking a pause with Jay stepping away, is for is for AJ Styles and the OC now to uh to uh, to uh, jump in and we can finally get AJ Styles against Roman. Or if not that, the uh, the new the new hurt business of Lashley and the, the Street Profits, which is which is what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> but my whole thing is if you my whole thing is if you go in that direction, I mean you I mean you you got Roman and you have Solo. You kind of you kind of would need Jim kind of would need Jimmy in that aspect. But again, the story the story is already going in the direction where Jimmy can't realign with the bloodline at this point. So. My so my whole question is where the where where does Jimmy go from now, and until WrestleMania at least if that's the plan. <laughs> and see, I feel I feel if this is gonna get dragged onto WrestleMania, it's I feel like after SummerSlam, the steam is just it's just deflating, and now they're just trying to hit a giant pause to maybe I guess like Brian just said. Let's get some other stories, or but it also depends if, if Roman's healthy or not. Are we gonna be without a champ for a while, and then we're stuck in fucking limbo for fucking however long? No champ, and people are just fighting just uh, to fight. There's there, there's a way. So let me let me start here with Jimmy. I didn't like that whole. I did it so you wouldn't be wouldn't become you and all this other stuff. Yeah. Your brother just had an opportunity to become WWE champion. Let, let, let's just say that you just cost your brother a WWE championship. This wasn't like a regular match or anything like that or a side match. And it, to me, that logic is just dumb, right? Like, it, it, it's kind of like, a, <laughs> like, it's just dumb to me. Like, I just don't like that at all because it's like, you just, it makes if anything sense to your brother be the champion and then. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the only one that matters, right? But yes. and just logically, it's just like you cost your brother the WWE championship. He was literally moments away from potentially winning the championship, and you pulled that biggest moment away from him. And you didn't want him to become a monster and all this other stuff. I'm like, y'all were just kicking people for three years, <laughs> like kicking ass for three years, and now you don't want him to take that top spot, like. First of all, it was redemption for you for getting hurt. And then mm-hmm. on the flip side, looking at Jay Uso saying he's quitting, I'm fighting all my family. You were fighting your brother anyway. You put him through a table. <laughs> it's a little right, brother. It doesn't count. Slam, he put solos through a table. Mm-hmm. Like, what, 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 it's crazy. It's cra- that, that whole part of me was where the, the storyline yeah. is using steam a little bit. Yeah, but like 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 like, like yeah, but like Lewis was saying, like like psychologically, I mean, it's like like he said, he's already fighting his cousin and his twin brother I mean, and, and his little brother. Now my twin too. He put his little brother through the table. Brother, brother, brother that I came out the womb with. Everybody fights a little brother. <laughs> like my little brother, okay, but now my twin. <laughs> come on. That's a, that's come part on, of my man. soul. Come on, man. I'm just that's part I'm, of his I'm soul. Just, I'm just mad at that part because it's like whatever. But then he quits, yeah. and it's like okay, he quits, and it's like we kind of have a feeling. Well, obviously he's gonna come back, but it's like what's the 
what's the what's the understanding that you come back now? Like, how do they? That's is another thing. Like Jimmy's one thing. Like where he? Where, yeah, I mean, is he all elite? <laughs> is he all hey, elite? He's on, the, he's I mean, on the alumni up. section now, so he's 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 gone. <laughs> <laughs> they're fully they're fully committed to this, right? Oh, but it's yeah. like, to me, it's just like to me, it's just like. What's the premise of Jimmy now? Where is he going? Is he going to challenge for the title? Is he going to stop trying to? Is he going to try to get Solo to join him and get away from Roman? Is that going to set up a title match? Uh, it, it, what pretenses does Jay come back like? Because Roman is kind of the head of the table. Solo's his right hand man. Are they just now going to beat up Jimmy until Jay comes back? I don't understand why the re- what other reason does Jay have to come back. Unless they beat up Jimmy to like a pulp, or unless Roman beats up his family to a pulp, which I just don't think is going to happen. But it's just like the direction. I mean, they're keeping it open ended, right? Like we don't know which direction they're going to go, and that maybe that adds a little bit more intrigue. They're trying to get a little bit more buzz into it. But it's like if if that's the storyline, maybe they again. This is my just me thinking off the wall here. Maybe they can have a tournament to determine a number one contender at some point. Go through payback. If Roman's actually hurt, if it's just like a sprain or something that's not too serious, maybe that sets up the match at Survivor Series. Maybe they drag that out. Maybe they can set up a tournament and do it that way. I think that would be the smart thing to do, add a little bit more intrigue to the title picture. But right now with this Bloodline storyline, it's kind of falling a little flat because we just don't know which way Jimmy's going. We don't know which way Jay's going. And it's just like, what's yeah. happening? Yeah, but that, <laughs> what's I happening? Mean, but that mystery is actually very intriguing, though. Like, I'm actually looking forward yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. On, Smack, on SmackDown to see what direction they're going to go. Are they going to take mm-hmm. a pause? Or is Roman going to do something new? Or is Roman actually hurt? And they're going to try to, like, find a uh, a, a loophole to kind of keep, keep Roman with the title and just go in another direction. So from that aspect, it is very interesting for uh, SmackDown. That's, front. Uh, that's what I've been hearing, though, but I feel um... – what I was reading somewhere, I was some article they were saying that none of them are booked for this Friday night SmackDown. So everybody's like, oh, they're well, definitely yeah, they're just taking a they're in Canada, right? Yeah, they're just taking a break from the whole bloodline storyline because Jay quit and then <laughs> and that's why Roman and yeah, that's why they, Edge is fighting Seamus. <laughs> basically. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we need uh we need a top guy up in oh, here. Yeah, it's Edge's night. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's yeah. why they're taking a the pause, yeah, because it's Edge's <laughs> night. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, oh, I don't know. Oh, I saw a who I think it was Kurt Angle though. Uh, I think he made a comment. He was like, "He's like, yeah, that was definitely a Paul oh, Heyman move." But I don't think they know what the fuck they're doing now anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're just making shit up. Like they're just making shit up. Like in the eighth, and they're just making shit up. Yeah, they're like they're just going this shit on the fly. Like, <laughs> All right, now your sister's gonna come out and no, I'm she's fine. gonna say. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine with the pause because it was after SummerSlam. We needed an answer, and they're going to be in Toronto or whatever for Edge's 25th anniversary. That's a big moment. He's mm-hmm. a historic figure. Let him have that moment. Mm-hmm. I don't mind taking a pause, but I just don't like the fact of Jimmy's ex- explanation. I don't like Jay quitting, and even though there's more intrigue because it's like Jimmy Jay's going to return at some point. What happens with Jimmy? But it's just like. Roman's still champion. <laughs> like all your guys' plans here was to get the belt off Roman. That's what I'm saying. Like, are we just gonna get that. somebody else to go after the title <laughs> now, or is it still <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna wait for these guys to come back? And plus, they're gonna show a highlight package on the show anyway, uh, of everything that happened. Probably gonna oh, yeah, kick off the sure. show. Matter of fact, no, 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 they're not. Oh yeah, yeah, they're gonna take. No, no, no. No, because it's edge like they're probably gonna kick it off with with like a like a like edge highlights or something or something. But they're definitely gonna do like a, mm-hmm. a, a recap uh, during the show, uh, and and then probably commentary is probably gonna add add something else and say like yeah Jay is really gone, and that oh maybe Jimmy's gonna be here next mm-hmm. week to, to explain his actions and like yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it, it'll still be there, but the night's about Edge. I guarantee it. Like yeah, it's gonna be once they come back, it'll probably be like oh well now Jimmy's just gonna fight solo for a bit and then. I don't know. This, I mean, this is what I mean. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, and like Dan says, it's just like we don't know what in what capacity Jimmy's coming back. Is like it makes no sense for him to go after the title because it's like you just cost your brother the title. Now you want the title, but oh, you don't want him to become tribal chief. Hence, why I said his his 
Hence why I said his whole thing should have, when he came back, he should have said, I want to be the tribal chief. And you would have been able to stretch this out. Yeah. You could have still had Jay. If you wanted to have Jay quit at that point, like my brother betrayed me, I don't know what to do. And he walked away kind of like exactly. what he did at the Royal Rumble when they were beating Sami Zayn. Like he walked away mm-hmm. in that manner. Like I'm so distraught over this. I don't know what to do. That's fine. And then you could have had Jimmy battle solo and battle, battle Roman and whatever it yeah. was, whatever the case would be. Jay comes back. What, and then again, just set up as long as this as long as this gets to Survivor Series fatal four way between them. That's all I care about. <laughs> just get there. Just get there. And as I said, if there's a substitution for that, have a have a tournament where you have a number one contender and that you can carry that through a pay-per-view. You can drag that out over a couple months. They can do that. And I feel like that's an option that they can have because one, that will bring attention to other people on the roster like AJ Styles like a mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley, like other people you have on your roster who should be in these type of moments, these type of battles, and get the matchups that we kind of want to see. So um, there's definitely a bunch of ways that they can go for it. Um, I just want to just uh, Why don't you just tell your boy, boy Cody to, <laughs> to come over to SmackDown? I mean, LA Knight went to Raw. In the first fucking place. He has to win the World Rumble. He can't. He, can't, he, he has to why win not? the World Rumble. You know the why Judgment not? Day is the only team allowed – you know the Judgment Day is the only team allowed to go between all shows. Uh, LA Knight just did. <laughs> LA Knight just did it with no explanation whatsoever. So you're telling me the top guy like Cody can't just be like, hey, he's not let, let, me, he's let, not me, let, me, let me go to SmackDown real quick. Lewis, 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 it's just, it's just like That's Collision it. and Dynamite with CM Punk. Like, he, st- he stays on Collision. He needs... Collision is CM Punk. Monday Night Raw is Cody Rhodes. It's the same. It's the same concept. No. Okay, but okay. So why why is it like LA Knight out of nowhere, with no explanation whatsoever? Why would he be at Raw in the first place? And he's doing a he photo shoot. Photos backstage. Why? The company. He was why not. Is, he was not technically on Raw. He, he, he couldn't wait till till Friday. He couldn't story, wait till Friday. He couldn't wait till Friday. You're not paying attention for his show. No. What do you mean? I'm not paying attention. If you work, if you work Fridays, why are you going to work on Monday? I can explain. I can explain. (laughs) Because he won. Because he won the Battle Royal, (laughs) he was granted immunity for one night to go to Monday Night Raw. WWE's a million dollar company. Because because he won the Battle Royal, Miz saw him taking the photos and then said, "He wins one Battle Royal," and then that's how it started. Who said? Who said he was granted this immunity? <laughs> Show me the clip where any 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 commentator said he was granted immunity. <laughs> I'm just, uh, man, I'm just trying to make sense. I'm just trying to make sense of this. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. There's no explanation. There's no explanation for him needing to be at Raw. So there could easily be no explanation why Cody can't be like, "Hey, Roman, we we get, we got to run that back real quick." You know, you don't got your boys no more. So you know. I don't want to wait till I don't want to wait till Rumble Lewis. season. I don't want to wait till. No, no, no. Well, you're gonna not, wait. Not yet, well, you're gonna Roman, wait. Roman has to be all alone. <laughs> solo, solo, still there. Roman has to be all alone first. Because remember true, when man. Cody cut that promo saying that eventually, yeah, you know, you, your whole kingdom is gonna gonna crumble. You're yeah. gonna be a chief with no tribe and and all that stuff. Oh, it hasn't yeah. happened yet. What yeah, him and Solo are definitely going to fight yeah. before the Rumble. And you know what's going to happen at the Rumble? To the store. You, no, you know what's going to happen at the Rumble? Cody's going to go in at number one. He's going to make it to the end. He's going to lose. And then he's just going to pop up on SmackDown. That's it. All right, so, Daniel, what were you just saying? That I'm paying attention to the story? Say it again. <laughs> You're not paying attention to the story. <laughs> Explain. Please. I'm still giving it away. I'm still giving it away that he goes to SmackDown. And that will lead him to mania. He doesn't need the rumble. He has to win. He can he just go. He can he literally just win. walk to SmackDown. That's all he has to do. LA Knight did it. <laughs> you can call an Uber if you want. He'd be like, yo, take me to SmackDown. Insubordinate. 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 Insubordinate can do that. You're a free me, agent Cody, can you're do telling that. Me. You want to know what Lewis, me. as I said, your negative energy. It's your not negative. negative energy. It's not negative. just going to let. It's no, just you don't like to hear alternate. It's just going to make Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns. Not. I'm just saying, you're going to make us have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. You're going to speak. Just say you're salty because I have just better pay per view predictions than you do. Just, just say it. Hey, hey, hey! As I said, <laughs> I'm willing to lose on the fair. predictions. Mm. He wants to talk about predictions, but yeah, who has the highest <laughs> scores? 
I mean, who's been more you, correct? Bruce, Bruce, that's not fair, man. You got connects in the company, man. That's not fair. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> it's all, these are the connects. These are the connects right here. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Cody doesn't need the I'm Rumble. We, he can just go to SmackDown. We've already seen it happen. Why can't the man, the man that Vince McMahon literally flew to his home and was like, we need you. You're telling me that man can't just go to SmackDown? Yes. Why? No. <laughs> you just said yes. No, we don't just say right. yes. <laughs> it's on the tape. He just the said story. yes. <laughs> we have to stick to the story. We have okay. to stick to the story. All right, Dan. Yeah. Ne- next, next, next topic. Yeah, yeah. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I was trying to segue into that. <laughs> I was trying to segue into that. Speaking about LA Knight, um, going on to see uh, Rey Mysterio win the U.S. title off of Austin Theory. His lengthy U.S. title reign has come to an end. Uh, Rey Mysterio filling in for Santos Escobar, who was taken out by Austin Theory earlier in the night and before the match, their match. And Rey Mysterio got the replacement call. Uh, what do you guys feel about that? Um, Rey Mysterio winning it, the U.S. title, Austin Theory's reign coming to an end. And then I just feel, I just put it a tidbit there that L.A. Knight and Santos Escobar, I feel like that was a missed opportunity for both those guys. Um, what do you guys think about that? All right, Louis, can I go on this one? All right. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it was a missed opportunity for L.A. Knight because as we see as we see now that there was a, a, pl- a plan for him, um, I, I think they didn't pull the trigger with the United States title because I, I feel as though they thought that okay okay he's hot now if we just give him the title then what then 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 where do we go from there let's actually tell a story and actually and actually and actually like build, build build him up as if as what they're doing right now with the Miz so I don't think it was a missed opportunity for him now for Santos. Mm-hmm. I also don't think it's a missed opportunity because I actually th- I actually think this is going to actually lead to what I want to see, and, that, and that's finally uh, a heel Santos Escobar again. As much as I've loved this uh, whole LW, LWO phenomenon, um, I like Santos so much better when he was a heel in Legado del Fantasma, and I think that's what we're leading to. You see the way the story pans out. Santo, Santos gets hurt. Rey Mysterio now wins the title. You don't think you you don't think you're gonna start seeing some seeds of jealousy from out of Santos Santos now that Rey Mysterio took took it took his opportunity and actually won the championship. I, I feel like I, I feel like this. Oh no, I'm fine with that. But yeah, I, that's why I don't. My bad. Is that judgment? Is that judgment day? Is that judgment day of Jace? <laughs> yeah. I it's mean, the Judgment Day storyline <laughs> with different no, no, I, no, I, th- oh I think it's God. gonna build over time. I don't think it's gonna uh, come immediately. I, th- I think it's gonna like it's, it's gonna be a you know Triple H's long long term st- storybook telling. Um, I, I think ev- mm-hmm. eventually though we're gonna get a Hill, Hill Santos probably probably by the by the uh, beginning of ne- mm-hmm. beginning of next year, but um. I like the fact that mm-hmm. Austin th- that they, that they uh, took the t- title off of Austin Theory. Um, since he since he's been on SmackDown, man, he yeah he 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 has definitely uh, fallen off at, compared to how how hot he was initially winning the, winning the title when they were trying to uh, get get him away from that uh, goofy prodigy gimmick he had with Mr. McMahon and actually trying to make him serious again. But ever since he's come out, come to SmackDown, I don't know if it's because he hasn't had the opponents. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's because I mean I, 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 that actually may be the only reason because he, he hasn't had he hasn't had the uh, the opponents and this and this story and this story mm-hmm. with uh, Great Mysterio and Santos was actually like his his first like decent feud so uh, I like I like the uh, direction that 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 they're moving with with uh, Ray Mysterio winning the U.S. title and 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 hey. I mean, they already tied in tied in Dominic when they had uh, Rey Mysterio go to uh, NXT to be in the corner of Dragon Lee. Um, by having Santos turn, by having Santos turn, then you got Dominic over there saying, "See, see you see what I, you see what I mean, Dad? It's, it's not just me. Look what just happened here." Continuing that story, so sky's the limit. Well, I'm gonna I'm 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 step in. I'm gonna step in here for a minute. One, I feel like it's a, a misstep with LA Knight because one, he hasn't really had a real rivalry. That's one to me. Two, Great. a mid card title for him is the next is the next stepping stone for him, right? Like that's usually what we see. 
They used so to we're really not going to count Bray Wyatt. Day. You win the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not going to count Bray Wyatt. It was on a pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a, I mean, it was a PLE. There was a PLE, PLE. match. <laughs> it was a pitch black match. Like, uh, uh, that's my whole problem. Talked about Mountain Dew, and, I, and I'm fine <laughs> with LA Knight, the building of him and stuff like that. But usually we have the coming of age, right? Like you usually have a rivalry, usually have a mid card title. I felt like that was something that he could have been put into that position against Austin Theory at that point in time. Go back and forth with Austin Theory, who's this punk kid, this arrogant kid, versus L.A. Knight, who's over with everybody and who's trying to work for everything and get to that next point in his career. I felt like that would have been a nice stepping stone. He didn't have to hold the title forever, but I feel like just to see him with some gold around his waist would have been a nice touch. That's one. And then another thing, too, with L.A. Knight, we can't have him keep beating up Hit row top dollar. We can't keep having him do that. Like I don't that's know who keeps booking that. Like, like give him another appointment. Let me let me, intervene, let me intervene for a second. Yeah. Like, about, about, <laughs> about, about LA Knight. Okay. When did people really re- really realize that LA Knight was hot? It was the night he came. He, he came out during the uh, Money in the Bank build. Logan Paul, Ricochet, Nakamura in the ring, and then LA Logan Knight cut that promo against Logan Paul. That that was the vi- that was the video on YouTube that ha- had the high numbers, and that's when people started mm-hmm. noticing that LA LA Knight was hot. And SummerSlam, I think, and I think Money in the Bank was like a couple of weeks later. So they, I think, they were trying to see, is this you know, can he keep up this momentum? Now, yeah, it's been a, now 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 it's been a month. Now let's see now let's see what he does in it does in a, in a feud another feud against the Miss. That's why. That's why I think. That's why I think it wasn't a missed opportunity. And I get that. Still I get that. Building yeah, him. He should, but he's on one, one, one. The Miz is on Raw and he's on SmackDown. <laughs> How did that happen? Like there's people to feud with him on the, the brand split. Is there's dead. people to feud with him on now? There's people to feud with him on SmackDown. That's Who? my whole thing. Is like Who? there's people on there that he can feud with and Who? battle with. He can go after Sheamus. He can go after Austin Theory. He can go after fucking the Austin Theory know, wouldn't shit. make sense because was, was he in the home. tournament though? Was he in the tournament? L.A. Knight or did he lose? Uh, L.A. Knight. I think he yeah. was. He lost. He, he was in the multi man match with Santos, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, but my whole yeah, thing about that is just like my whole thing about that is that that was a missed opportunity because that would have given the storyline. You would have had a prick heel in Austin theory that he could have went back and forth with. You could have kept building him. And now it's like, he's battling the Miz. It's like, is he really going to lose to the Miz? No, <laughs> he's not going to lose to the but Miz. He, he, I don't think it's I don't, a missed opportunity. I, I, just like, I just feel like the Miz. I, I, go ahead, go I just ahead. feel like the, the Miz giving him a rub isn't doing it. Like that's not going to do anything. It's a warm-up. Like, that's feud. not gonna do anything. It's gonna give him <laughs> cheers. It's gonna give him more. It's a, it's a, it's a, warm, it's a warm-up feud. <laughs> you just want to see him with gold already. That's I just the thing. Like be... No, I'm just saying. I just feel like that's the natural order of things. If we're gonna be building stars, you win the mid card strap and you continuously ascend to that main card. I feel like, like they, haven't, they haven't done that in like a while. It's just like, they're just... Like who has won? Why not I mean, now? <laughs> no, I know, but uh, so, you said the same so, so thing. Just, you said the same so thing just, with Austin Theory, though. Mm-hmm. Look, he got the U.S. title, and it was a dud of a run. I mean, yeah, he beat John Cena. Nobody really they cared didn't, for he that. He didn't face anybody. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't a dud. It only became a dud once he got drafted to SmackDown. But before, before then, it was a good run. It was okay. He he, he, like, he I, never. That's not his fault, I mean, though. That, that's. Not, with Austin Theory, that's not his fault. That's not his fault. And, and then another thing right there, LA Knight could have been his first real feud. <laughs> that, that's I think that's he's, the main thing there with that. I think that, they're just trying like, to give him more, they could have gone back and more wins before he's – I think he's just – I don't know. I have a feeling they're either just going to catapult him into the main event But he's going to get point. more wins against Top Dollar? No, but this is what he's I'm saying. He's main wins against Top Dollar. This is what I'm saying. I don't think they want to put a <laughs> mid-card title on him – because they know he's going to, if things play out right, he's going to get put into that main event spot. Why prolong it with a mid card title? Be, he's already lost, though. What do you mean? He's already lost. How? He's been pinned before. Who does that doesn't really matter. 
Hmm. What does that matter? No, I'm talking. I'm saying right now he's yeah, winning. <laughs> I'm saying right now he's winning. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm yes, he's that, he's I'm beating saying, like, top dollar. Yeah, he's gonna saying, beat the Miz. This is all these wins are gonna lead to that main event. So so he's gonna get a main event push after beating top dollar in the Miz. You don't know who he's do going that. up after the Miz. <laughs> it's 2020. You don't. I'm no. I'm not saying he's getting it. I'm not saying. Listen. Can you listen? <laughs> I'm not saying he's going to beat the Miz <laughs> and go straight for the world title. I'm saying he's. I'm saying. No, I understand that. After the Miz, I, I understand. Guarantee that. he'll have another feud with one more person, and then boom, number one contenders match. Whatever. You know, he's going to get a couple wins before, but yeah, it's a, it's I'm a saying, warm up. I, I feel this is the start of him climbing that mountain. Yeah, he's had exactly. Lost, it's it's a warm up feud because we, you know, because Miz is the ultimate, is the ultimate heel, and LA Knight is hot right now. So you're going to, you're going to get that, that, that difference. Yeah, he's going to get a pop between easily. Between face, faces ah, you just hit, so see, that's negativity. It's right a warm up feud for him, and then right you're going to another more serious feud. Uh, negativity against the Miz and shitty booking. Yes. <laughs> Why? That's the Miz's That's job. He, I'm, I'm how many people? How many Miz people? This is a triple people... crown champion, Demi. Exactly. That's respect for the man's two times. <laughs> respect your Hall of Famers, Daniel. Respect it your Hall of even, Famers. It isn't even like the Miz. It isn't even like the Miz has like a, a faction that like LA Knight can go against or anything like that. There's nothing that he has to go through. It's the Miz. <laughs> hey, maybe he reunites with Logan Paul and they feud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, on that standpoint of LA Knight, I feel like they're just wasting his run and just living off the no. promos and the skills. You're right discrediting now. them. Just, too and much. I feel like they should. Be. I just don't think we know he's going to beat the Miz. Like, there's nothing he, like he's going to get I'm a just, win. I'm Isn't sorry, that the point? Oh, I'll, say this, the point? I'll say this much: Logan Paul, Logan Paul is going to face LA Knight at WrestleMania this year. I'm calling it right now. Say that again. See that. <laughs> Logan Paul is going to face LA Knight at WrestleMania this year. I'm going to call it right now. I could see it. I don't want it to happen. They should LA Knight that. continues this momentum. They should do that. Into this, that's exactly the match they're going to do. Probably. And guess what? And guess what? He's, he's going to lose. <laughs> no. No. Logan's already that's got what, his win. Imagine that. I'm, I'm, uh, what are you talking about? It's August. It's August sixteenth, two thousand twenty-three. They're going. If that match happens, LA Knight's taking the pin. No, he's not. <laughs> they built him no, up all this not. time to have him lose to Logan Paul. No, I'm, I'm booking it he's right not now. Taking, he, no, he's, he's not, not taking right the pin. Now. He's not. I don't think he would. Uh, yes, yes, he I don't is. think he would take the pin. <laughs> no. Saying, I'm, uh, let me write it down. I don't have my pen. Where's my pen? <laughs> I don't have my. I want to. Just mark this. I'll write it down. August 16, 2023. If Logan Paul versus LA Knight, LA Knight's going to lose. No. <laughs> They're going to do it. They're no. Do it. I'm just saying. Uh, they Lex Express, they Lex Express Cody Rhodes. They're going to do it. They're going to break all our hearts. I'm just saying. <laughs> but now, um, let me move on to <laughs> the second part of this here. I don't I don't want to take too long on this, but um Santos Escobar. I felt like that was a missed opportunity for Santos. Like no. that should have been his moment. No. Getting he's the too he's too baby face, and it's not and I feel like they... eventually so what? the L the LWO has the LWO has been a fun get group. Ray versus Santos for the title <laughs> like, and Santos Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be Ray versus Santos easily. Like Brian said, he's gonna be way better, he's way better as a heel. And this is literally set up for that because they were a so, heel faction. They were a heel so we're faction. Have, we're gonna have we're gonna have Austin Theory. So so on SmackDown, just for just for just for recollection, we're gonna have we're gonna have the hurt business, the new hurt business be heels. We're gonna have Santos Escobar be heels. We're gonna have the bloodline be heels. Like who's left? The OC? OC, yes. <laughs> like, okay. everyone's Rolling just, Brutes. Everyone's just a heel on SmackDown. Rolling Brutes. <laughs> Hit row. <Yeah. laughs> I just feel like that was a missed opportunity for Santa. No. I felt like he should have been in that position to no. dethrone Austin Theory, maybe start a rivalry, and then have him go after the 
something, something. Santos he's, Escobar has been fantastic. And, yeah, but he's not a good, he's, he's not a good baby face. Position. He's not a good baby face, though. He's a natural heel. That's like um, you know what he reminds me of? Like it, I feel like if he would have won the title, it would have been like a ricochet US title reign. That's where like him just like smiling. But he actually and, like, has like hmm. he actually he actually has personality, though. <laughs> As a babyface, I don't see it. He can pull that off. This is my mentor, Ray Mysterio. I love he him pull so that much. Off. Blah, blah, blah. Like, no. Like, come on. It's it, the setup is easy there. Saying, if if anything, he's gonna he's gonna take like, that title I just feel off. Like every fraction, every faction is gonna be a heel. I feel like there's just too many heel factions at that point. If he's mm-hmm. gonna do that. But look at how long they've been. And where does that leave they, Austin been, Theory? They've been a babyface faction for a while now, since what? Before WrestleMania? Like a year. Exactly. Like a year, yeah. It's almost a exactly. Year. So why why is it so bad that they're gonna be a heel now? I just I just again the hurt business is gonna be a heel. They're gonna be heels. The bloodline I mean, we are. I don't heels. know if the hurt like, business is gonna be heels. They beat up uh the brawling brutes. <laughs> hey, it's just showing dominance, them. right? They're heels. It's just showing dominance, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I would like that to be the the answer. I would like that to be the answer, right? Like, but again, I just feel like that's a missed opportunity for yeah. Santos. And exactly, like, making a statement. That don't, that don't necessarily right, make it right. just makes them I strong. Mean, I mean, if Ray, if, if, if Rey Mysterio is turning, if Rey Mysterio is turning to, if they're turning. They, if they put the title on Rey Mysterio to turn them heel, I'm not against that because I understand that the teacher and the, the young guys coming after him finally get that. But it's like that ties into the Dominic Mysterio thing. Like, is he gonna like that means that means Dominic was right? <laughs> is that is that what we're gonna do? Like Dominic's right now. Like Michael Cole's gonna blow a gasket. <laughs> He's sick. Like that, like, Someone needs to beat the crap out of him. <laughs> That's why I'm like, all these heels and all this stuff, and especially with that storyline, like Michael Cole is going to blow a gasket. Exactly. And then does Dominic yeah, join yeah, the yeah, LWO? He is so, he he is like so much better since like, Vince McMahon is no longer like involved in the day-to-day anymore. Yeah. He, yeah. It's, it's, I think they finally let Michael Cole go. <laughs> so, Dan, t- tell me this, though. Because you were rattling off how there's so many heel groups. Who right now is a top baby's face besides Cody Rhodes? On Raw, mm-hmm. Seth Rollins. Yeah, Seth Rollins. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. No, on uh, SmackDown. Ricochet. Oh, no, it's SmackDown. Yeah, Ricochet's on Raw. Yeah, LWO is on what? On SmackDown, right? Yeah, LWO is on SmackDown. Yeah, right now the top baby faces are, are AJ Styles and Sheamus, sadly. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> he needs a heel turn. <laughs> oh, not what? Too many heels. Now you want to create another heel faction? Another heel faction? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I didn't say the brawling brutes. I didn't say the brawling brutes should be heels. I said Sheamus should be a heel. Sheamus should be a heel. <laughs> I feel like if he that, if Sheamus goes like, heels, the balling brutes are gonna go heels as well. Like exactly, there's no. I don't think plus, so. Plus, yeah, I don't you tell me, Butch is gonna be on he his own. Oh, he should. He should. But I don't know. This is what I'm saying. There aren't well, Butch or Butch in. Uh, what we I'm need saying, I, is a tag team I, division. I, <laughs> you you got to tell me that. You that's what all this is. That's all. That's what all this is true. There's so many fucking <laughs> factions and no LWO damn tag has titles. <laughs> LWO. Don't don't send me down that hole right now. Don't send me down that hole right now. Pretty deadly whenever that got shot. Like, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying that should, that's no, what I should know. happen. But but I'm just I mean, saying yeah, I, don't I just know. feel like those are missed opportunities. You can have to agree because I feel I mean, like you guys I don't disagree I f- because you guys feel like the storyline's going a different place. But it's just like. No, my thing is, it's like I just feel like the L, I just feel like the LWO would have been benefited from Santos backing up Santos, and then whenever they bring back the tag team titles, they could they could have had that. But it's like, eh, 
No. Eh. I don't know. Uh, I just I just felt like maybe because maybe because I saw Santos in NXT as a like this top NXT. heel, and then he comes up here and he's a baby face. And I don't know. Maybe he just is not resonating with me as that. Like I like the group. But mind you, they're just it was more just focused on Ray and mm-hmm. Zelina for a bit, not highlighting the rest of the guys. Santos is just there supporting Ray, they're supporting Zelina, and it's just like, oh, they've been all happy. Like Brian talked about this, like, yo, we're like, what are they doing with this group? They're just like over here, just like happy and oh, we're cool and this and this and that. But it's just exactly. like it's just like yeah. you know, like it's, it's not it's not getting them. It's a complete opposite so, of what made people what made people like them in the first place. Exactly. And, and it's like when they were they were heels, they were in that top spot, which I feel that's what they're trying to get to right now. So that's why I think this heel turn is gonna make more sense. And it's gonna give him a bigger push if he does beat Ray for that title, you know. What what if they went in the direction of of having of having Dominic be the reason that Santos turns heel and then Dominic takes over the LWO? As I said, I don't, I don't know if Zelina would go. <laughs> that with means that, Dominic. Though. No, no, no. If, if Santos is turning, then Joaquin Wild, uh, Cruz Del Toro, and, and Zelina, they're all turning to turn him too. So mm-hmm. this shall already be a heel. But Dom, but Dominic will have Rhea, yeah, and yeah, I, I don't mean, think Rhea and Zelina are going to capitalize on Zelina after the match at Backlash. So she has no momentum right now. So you might as well have have her turn heel. They can't do that because then Rhea Ripley's going to be running Rock Shaw on SmackDown. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they can't do that. That's too, but they, many, but that's they too already crossed and passed. Yeah, but they already that's healed that momentum that. though from from the Backlash match though. So you you can't can you re can you rebuild I mean, she that? Had, I don't she think had, you can. She had a good show back to Puerto Rico. She had a she had a good show on that Money in the Bank. She had a good she show on that Money in the Bank. The code right off the ladder is dope. Mm-hmm. So I mean, oh yeah, Money well, in the Bank. She now? should be in the. What has she done now? I don't know. Last time nothing, I saw Zelina nothing, Vega, she nothing. she was coming out on Shotzi's tank trying to fool Bailey and um EO Sky. That was on SmackDown. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh man. All right, ring oh, the next man. bell. Fix it, WWE. <laughs> Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Bring it <laughs> um, we can get into Judgment Day bloopers. I'm calling it, of course, with their shenanigans with the briefcase. But um, <laughs> what do you guys think about JD McDonough's debut? Against uh, uh, Sami Zayn, uh, I'll start off with it because that started off the night, and especially JD McDonough uh, arguing with the Judgment Day. Sami Zayn coming out and attacking him. Those guys having a match. Sami Zayn overcoming the odds, winning the match. Uh, what do you guys think about JD McDonough's uh, interference with the Judgment Day, and then his debut, and then losing on Raw, which I thought was a bad choice because it's like you're introducing this new character. And then he just loses to Sami Zayn, and it's like, isn't Sami hurt? Like, what is going on here? And I don't know why he lost that. So let's start there. (laughs) What do you guys think about Jade? (laughs) You didn't have the pointer. You didn't have the the knot. (laughs) Daniel, uh, I'm his elbow anymore. I'm going to say this in response to the JD McDonough loss. Mark Henry, Mark Henry once said, he's lost a whole bunch of matches matches in in his life, but. And a lot of those matches, even though he lost, he came out he came out looking better than the guy who beat him. So, in, resp- in response to that, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, 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 sometimes the winner that the loss the loss doesn't matter for a, for a character uh... because we knew because we look look how he looked at the end of Raw though standing standing aside the hardest group to, in, in, in uh, WWE right now. Beating up, beating up the top baby, the two top baby faces on Raw right now. So, did you even think that he just lost to Sami Zayn? No, I see, I see at the end of Raw, he's standing over Sami. Standing I over Sami. Zayn. <laughs> you remember he lost to Sami, but but I get it. I, but I remember yeah. okay, he, he he beat Sammy, he beat up Sami Zayn. I, so I think for, I think for once, uh, I, the, I, lo- I don't think the, the loss hurt. I think him. I think for once I'm gonna agree with Dan. I don't know. I feel like. Him aligning himself with Finn and just being his first match, I feel like it would have done him more good if he got the the W. Um, because you know, Sammy, yeah, and you know, Sammy always has that underdog thing, you know, ah, I'm injured, but it really could have capitalized it and you know, done some heelish shit and still could have won the match. 
and I feel like he would still have the same effect and still be with Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's just, it would give him more credit because I feel like too many times in this day and age that was cemented to me. That would have cemented him with the group. Yeah, that would have but that's what I'm saying. I feel like in in this day and age with debuts, <laughs> if you come out losing and mm-hmm. it's bad, it. I mean, look at Karrion Cross when he came. Boom, lose. Like. Couple other people, I can't think of anybody else right now, but that's one that sticks out tremendously. It's like, bro, <laughs> this dude was a monster, and he comes out, loses to what was it, Jeff Hardy or whoever the hell it was with this, and it was just like, I, w- I, I want to talk dead. about that, but I want to get through everything first because yeah, Jeff Hardy. He, 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 you just opened up, you just opened up a wound now by by mentioning Karrion Cross. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get through everything we have planned, and, then, and at the very end, I'm, I'm going to talk about Karrion Cross. But yeah. as far as but as far as the, <laughs> the, the, judgment, the judgment day goes, um, well, well, they're the hardest. They're the hardest group in the the the, the WWE right now. And um, I, what were you saying, Lewis? I I don't know. I even though I didn't pick them to win at SummerSlam, I think they are doing Finn a disservice. I think he should be champ. Or should should have been keeps champ. losing, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like I don't know. I don't, and I don't know if it's with the I don't know if it's the whole money he in the bank. Losing. It's just <laughs> just just screwing it over. But I'm like, dude, what does this guy have to do to like? You had the perfect seven year whole feud thing with Seth. Like that should have finally been like a redemption for him. And I don't know. I feel like being presented with something like that, I'd be like, yo, you're really going to take this away from me? Like, but eh, we've seen it happen before. But I don't know. For him, I feel like it's like this man literally came up, got injured, came back, floundered for a while, went back to NXT, won the title again, came back up still strong with the Judgment Day, dominating, and he still can't get the title. It's like, what does he have to do? He's the hardest group on Raw, and he keeps losing. <laughs> like, I can't, that's my biggest problem with this whole Finn thing. He keeps losing, and in the most weirdest ways. And I'm fine with the briefcase being a crutch between the Judgment Day. I understand that. But he can win a damn match. He should win a damn match. He's yeah. the leader of the Judgment Day and can't win. And can't win, even with help. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> Adding J.D. McDonough to the group, which I think we all knew what was going to happen when he was kind of playing in the background and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. But it's like if this group is going to continue to be dominant, you had J.D. McDonough lose. You had Finn Balor lose. Like those count. Like they lost. Yeah, you beat up the guys after you guys ganged up on them. But you guys aren't getting any wins. So it's like where is that leading to until the, I guess where the, well, whatever the briefcase gets cashed in, whatever the storyline on that is. But it's just like the leader of the group, is losing like mm-hmm. every time, like every time. I can't remember the last time Finn Balor got a win. Mm-hmm. I can't. Didn't he <laughs> beat Edge or no? I can't. Or did Edge win that one? No, Edge won that match at WrestleMania. The hell in a cell, right? Edge, won. Yeah, yeah, Edge, <laughs> Edge beat them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. I can't and that's why I don't know. Win. To me, it's. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know if JD's actually going to join the Judgment Day. For some reason, something's telling me that him and Finn are going to break away. And it's either going to be to do because of all this bullshit with the money in the bank or Damien, uh, Damien's going to cash mm-hmm. in, win, and then he's like, nah, screw that. I'm going to take the title from you. I don't know. I don't really see where they're going. Failed. In failed. Terms with- cash. Failed. No, <laughs> no. Well, I can see that happening too, though. I'm not gonna lie. I can see him. Nah, I, no, I can see here. Finn. Nah. I can see Finn. I can see Finn screwing over the cash in. I could see that happening because he's gonna be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. "You screwed me out of like two world two titles, championship matches, two <laughs> championships. I'm screwing you out of yours too." Like it. even though even though he didn't, <laughs> yeah. Well, the second like, one, sorry didn't. you don't know how to when to take the briefcase. <laughs> sorry you don't know when to take the briefcase and actually yeah, use it to our advantage. Sorry, coach. <laughs> 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 like, that's coach. the thing that's hurting him. Not. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I, yeah. Like I'm just I'm just like I'm just like again I've been talking about Finn Balor like for a long time. Talented, strong personality. We saw him the Seth promos that he was able to get over and make that feud 
feel like something. Not just Seth Rollins being with his music and stuff like that. Finn was actually getting that feud over. And he continues to lose. And it's like, where's the payoff for Finn Balor to get over this hump? You know what I mean? I just don't see it. <laughs> I just yeah. don't see it. Even if he's not going to be champion, I'm fine with that. But it's like, he can he can get a win. <laughs> he can get a win. And I understand it's against Cody Rhodes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But he had the judgment day. He had the briefcase. He had his new lack. Like, all these things that he's had. And he still can't win. It's just like, what the hell? I, I like that it was funny how he lost. Like, the between his legs like that was funny but it's just like come on man <laughs> it, it's all it's i don't know it's just not needed like these guys are a serious threat and you got them goofy losing like it's just like i don't know i i feel like it just hurts their image and their strength like yeah you're teasing yeah a breakup that, but yeah that but yeah that's exactly what they're doing it's just in like you said a goofy manner teasing the te <laughs> teasing the uh, eventual breakup but um, and I do think that eventually when they do break off, you're definitely gonna have Finn and J Finn and JD together. Yeah. Um, I think I think Priest I think Priest is uh strong enough to stand on his own, and then you got Dom and you got Dom and Rhea. Like I said, they're both champions right now, so I think they're strong enough to stand on their own. So if the Judgment Day is heading towards a breakup, um, you definitely have a lot to look forward to for their respective uh respective uh, parties. Failed cashing. Book it. Oh. <laughs> Failed. Wow. They're going. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. And I, no, like Damian, you know, I like Damien. You, you know what? You might be right. And when it does happen, that will that will like be like the 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 starting point of the of like okay, it's a breakup. <laughs> now now you know it's a breakup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like okay, first few is going to be like, yeah, against Damien. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then maybe Finn can finally get a win. <laughs> and then that's just going to set up JD and Finn versus Damien and Bad Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't know. I, I, that's I think I, was, I just wanted to see a Judgment Day with all the titles. Like, the give, me, give me one, give me one like, group that can do what like Undisputed evolution. Area did. Like, finally. But nobody seems to get there. <laughs> They should be like evolution. Her That's what I was business. saying. They should have been like evolution. I really hope the hurt business goes that route. Please. You really want to make this new hurt business strong? That's what you do. But it can't be Roman, not, though. I'm, I'm lost face. It's, that's why it sucks that they're I mean, on yeah, SmackDown. Now, if they were on Raw, oh, yeah. but it can be. Now, they should just magically appear on Monday Night Raw. Bobby Lashley is not winning the Royal Rumble. Bobby Lashley is not winning that the Royal Rumble. I just want to point very out. very <laughs> nice. It's not happening. I agree with Daniel on this one. Bobby Lashley it's is not, not winning the Royal Rumble. We don't want to see Why Bobby not? Lashley win the Royal Why Rumble. Why not? The man has paid need, his dues. We don't, we don't need to see a Lashley and Reigns as a media main event. No. Why not? Why are you not supporting because yourself? Because like the, story is, cause it's, cause the story is you as, want, as, as Reigns. You want to Southern... White hair, blonde eye. No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, now you want to bring racist? <laughs> I have to stop myself. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So he's black and bald headed, so I got to support him, right? <laughs> right? This is the Hulk Hogan talk. This is the Hulk Hogan talk all over again. This is the Hulk Hogan. I'm like, you guys support this man. I can't believe. You need to let that let that go. No, I will never let that go. He was the man. He was the man of the '80s. All right. The '80s are dead. I'm just saying, he's the Hulk Hogan and, of this era, Cody Rhodes. Oh, we're, God. We're, we're not swapping out Hulk Hogan for Brock Lesnar, man. All right. <laughs> Brock, hey, Brock shook Cody's hand. He broke character. That shows he shook something. the better man's hand. Yes, he did. Yeah. He did. He out of his illustrious, hand. out of his illustrious career, he has never done that. Mm. His illustrious career after he lost, I'm like yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, and wasn't racist. Get out of here, loser. You and wasn't racist. racist? Your I mean, man, I mean, your man needs, without uh, your man. Your I mean, man if, Cody without, if Cody wins the world title, man, man, we might have to put him in the top sixteen. I mean, 
Wow. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> run. That's crazy. I don't even. He didn't even. Did he? Did he win it? He didn't win an AEW. Who? Yeah. Uh... Oh, he didn't win an AEW. Did he? No. He won, the, the title, title. He, he won the TNT title. He won the TNT title. Yeah, he won the TNT title. Yeah, he can't be in the go bracket. He can't be in the bracket. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that was his booking decision, though. So he can't be in the Brock Cam. Uh, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> Didn't we talk about it earlier? <laughs> Didn't we talk about them enough? Yeah, um, but uh, we've been talking about this. We're kind of rumbling, especially with after that AEW fiasco. Um, with Lufisto, is that her name? The indie wrestler, Lufisto. Mm-hmm. Um, basically talking about the state of the AEW wrestling over there on their side of things. Um, we're starting to see that trickle into WWE with their women's wrestling, especially with Becky Lynch and women's matches getting cut from the card. Um, this has been talked about for a little bit for a while now. Um, probably ever since women have started wrestling, right, with the state of women's wrestling being a little bit up and down, having uh, their matches cut a little bit disrespected in that sense. Uh, but what do you guys think about the recent events going on, especially with Becky Lynch, um, the stuff going down in AEW? Um, but let's start off with Becky Lynch's, especially with her Lemonade shirt. Um, after Triple H's press conference with the Lemonade comment saying that our talent has to make lemons out of lemonade. Um, Becky Lynch is, they are really obviously capitalizing off of that, especially with Becky Lynch's t-shirt now with a lemon on it. <laughs> Simple, but effective. Um, but what do you guys think about that? Especially with all the things going on, especially with Trish and Becky's match getting cut for SummerSlam. Um, just the state of women's wrestling, not getting a lot of time on the match cards and stuff like that. Uh, what are you guys thoughts? You want to go first, Brian, or let me go? Uh, you can go ahead. Um, I don't know. It's tough mm-hmm. because we're in a time where if, I don't know. I don't know if it's more so the women that are wrestling them that maybe they don't see that like high caliber anymore like they first did when – you know, you had the four horse women coming in. You had Charlotte, Becky, you know, where, you know, I, f- I don't know. I feel like they got more time. But then, like, once they came in, then we got even more. Like, we got the election bliss. We got the Oscars. We got the, you know, I don't know. I feel like more, let's say elite, but I think maybe more well-rounded female wrestlers i feel like when looking at nxt i haven't i don't know i haven't really watched it as much but to see i don't know i'm not seeing these like future even the the girl that's champ right now she's not really yeah she's not impressing me as as much she's good in the ring she is but i don't know her personality and her character i'm not really a huge fan of i feel like it's kind of generic but i think she's i think she's probably she's suffering from mandy rose um yeah but she can do more than (laughs) what people kind of in the wrestling ring but i feel like her character is mandy rose and jace like it's just another mandy rose right now I feel like that's and, what it is, like a substitution yeah, for that's that. That's why I don't know if it's mm-hmm. more of a character thing. And then when it comes to AEW, I mean, mm-hmm. I just feel like AEW just doesn't book their women's division at all. And they have – I feel they also have some really <laughs> – I mean, you have you have people I'm coming talented out with wrestling. <laughs> yeah, Come on. Like, I don't know. They just – I don't know. I think that company does not focus well on their – women's division and it's just like you you had this like charlotte flair and like esque and like Britt baker who was literally having these crazy matches and everything and then you have her as like the best friend to like the champ and stuff and i didn't believe it i thought she was gonna easily turn on her and never did but then it's like you have people like athena come in ruby soho all these other people it's like yeah we thought they were gonna get this like the chance that they didn't get in wwe and they I mean, yeah, Athena's freaking Ring of Honor mm-hmm. champ. Or I don't is even think she is anymore. Like, I don't even know because yeah. I haven't been watching it at all. But it's I think, just I like, think she. I think she. Uh, no, actually, no. I, I don't even know. <laughs> Shit, I thought I, I don't knew. even know. 
Um, but that's what I'm saying. It's like you don't. She's on Ring of Honor. Like, who's really watching Ring of Honor right now? It's like, I don't know. They, I, I feel like at one point AEW had a good, like they were giving women time. They were having these crazy matches. Yeah, it might have been a little bloodier than some people would, like, but like these people, these women were putting on bangers. And as of late, it's like, I don't know if they're just trying to make time for other people, other like male superstars, but it's just like, I feel like you got Willow Nightingale is another one that's like a beast, and then you got, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but the new the new chick who became a TN, TBS champ. I don't, I Who's feel like we barely, yeah, we barely seen her perform. She's had some quick matches, but it's like, yeah, no, yeah, we saw her at the at the um, at the garden. It was just like she got a quick match, oh, and it's just like, I don't know, it's tough. I don't know if it's. I think for WWE, I think it's maybe I they've mean, just been recycling through like the people that they, or the matchups that they've been wanting to get, and they're not utilizing these new talent. But I don't know if they just don't view them as like top top caliber stars, so they just keep going back to the Becky Lynches, the Bianca's, the Oscars, the Charlottes, mm-hmm. you know. But the AEWs, I they're not showing me anything impressive at this point right now with their booking, so. Okay, since this is a topic on the state of women's wrestling, uh, let me let me just say this: Is women's wrestling in a better place than, than it was years ago? Yes. Have women been uh, show, showcased a lot more mm-hmm. on, on uh, whether it's WWE, AEW, Impact? Have women been showcased in a better light? Yes, they've been getting longer matches. It all started in NXT yes. with, with mm-hmm. Triple H really pushing the pushing the uh, vision of, of women's wrestling. You know, we got the NXT four horse women out of it. Uh, we've we've gotten great we've gotten great matches. We've gotten some we got, we got some great stories. We've gotten like the rise of Bianca Belair and such. So we've got some positivity from it. We have progressed, mm-hmm. but in recent but in in recent months there has been a sort of a uh, re- regression. And if you really look at it, who? Which women are, are the are the have been the most consistently booked women since since the beginning of the year? I can only na- think of two. There's Rhea, there's Rhea Ripley, Charlotte. <laughs> I, I wasn't even gonna say Charlotte. I was actually gonna say uh, another another women's champion from the NWA. Her name is uh, Camille. I, I think she's she she's been the NWA women's champion for eight hundred uh, over eight hundred days now. Oh, those wow. two, those two women are the only women I can think of that have been booked that, that, that have been booked consistently acro- across 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 uh, the uh, industry and and mm-hmm. and the sad thing about it is is we saw in the past how how women how women were uh, displayed it was more about looks than ability you know you're seeing skimpy bikinis and now we're in the state in the state now where now now women are being uh, re- respectable what they can do in the what they can do athletically what, what stories that they, that, that they can tell and you got all this you got all this fe- female talent. I mean, we don't even need to name all the women in WWE. You got Bianca, you got mm-hmm. Charlotte, you got you got you got Oscar, you got you got Becky, you got Becky Lynch. I just name I just name I just name four right there. Think of all the few think of all the feuds and stories that you could tell them amongst them. And then you got Bailey, you got you got Eos, you got you got Eos mm-hmm. Scott who just became mm-hmm. a women's champion. And and then, and then and then you go over to AEW. I mean, their women's women's roster is indeed stacked. You know, they do have you got Sheeta, you got you got. You know, Paige, Soraya, uh, you know, got Tony, Tony Storm, Ruby Soho, and they are they are deep. But it, it seems as though that uh, Tony Khan doesn't have the uh, have a hard on for it like he has for other things. Um, mm-hmm. They had, I mean, they had they had Jade there, you know, going going undefeated before losing to Chris Statlander, and apparently she's on a break. Uh, we don't know when she's coming back, but she but she but she was hot. She was somebody that that that. Was was truly an AEW original, someone that they someone they were building, coming along, someone that was getting better. Who has the character, who had who had the look. She could. She, I thought the plan was for to make her the the future of, of your women's division to build around her. She's been away. We don't know what that situation is. Um, yeah, Jimmy Hader was, was was somebody who who, who I would consider AEW original. They, that they, that they that they booked strong, but then they but then as soon as she got hurt, their main story pretty much went down the drain. And the, the women's championship was pretty much has been in limbo since. 
I mean, you have Sheeta who won the title, and some people some people are still looking at that and say, is saying that came out of left field, that came out of nowhere. There was no. Yeah, she beat Tony Storm, right? Yeah, yeah, she beat Tony Storm out of nowhere. Just like, 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 was it like on a dynamite or something? Exactly, and the way that you're responding to it right now is the exact reason. Is the yeah, exact reason why their women's their women's division is in the toilet is in the toilet right now. Because Dude, I saw the fact that there was a title change and, and you don't even know it and you don't even, and you don't even care and, and it's and it was and the woman that won it was the woman that was champion the women's champion during the pandemic for them and you still don't even care about care about it mm -hmm. it, it really it really it really does say a lot and then and then you go back to the to the WWE side and I'll even and I'll even use the the women's tag team championships as an example they had that segment with with Chelsea Green and then we got a Piper Niven signing we hadn't seen Piper Niven, Niven in months. Week after week after week, how many times did we mention what well, where's Piper <laughs> Niven as a challenger for Rhea Ripley? Where's Piper Niven to yeah. even just have even one match or even just an enhancement match with somebody to showcase her? They just bring her back and the, and the, just to just to be a, a tag team champion. How many and this is the this is the this is the third partner that Chelsea Green has now. This is the third one. First one, Carmella got pregnant, <laughs> Bill got hurt. What the hell is gonna happen to Piper Niven next? Like, oh, oh, what, what is she gonna have an accident or something? <laughs> what but this, this, is, this is the third tag team, the third tag team partner. And then when we talk about the women's tag team, champion, the women's tag team championships, the the intention of bringing them of bringing them in to to, to what we have now, it, you know, the the tag team titles have, have been the the women's tag team titles have been completely completely misbooked, and it's a reflection of of, of the uh, direction direction of uh, where where women's wrestling is going. I mean, there used to be a, there used to be a point in time where like you said, we had Bianca and Sasha main event one night, one night of WrestleMania. Um, just th this past WrestleMania, mm. we had we had arguably one of the best women's matches of all time with Charlotte, with Charlotte and, and Rhea. Mm -hmm. And e even though we say that based upon the the, the story, the bloodline storyline, we knew that the tag team match should the main event at night one. When you saw how great that ma great that match was, mm -hmm. and the fact that it was it was the women's championship, it could have easily been the, been the main event. Mm -hmm. But um, yep. Mm -hmm. And the uh, and the, just one more thing, and the one thing that's kind of like frustrating frustrating for me is the guy who's in charge of creative right now was the guy that started the evolution of women in NXT. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I'm there. Has, I know that there's a difference between uh, running NXT and, and running and obviously doing do three hours of television on Monday Night Raw. I know there's there's a complete difference in the booking philosophies and, and such. But as far as innovation goes, Triple H, Triple H was the guy that that guy that, that that started it, that kind of brought it to the forefront. We got the NXT four 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 horsewomen because of, because of Triple H's Triple H's vision, and I'm one and I'm wondering what's preventing him from from uh, duplicating that vision now, in the main roster. Because it's got to be because it's got to be be mm -hmm. something. I know he he has um, to, he can do it, but. Eh. Yeah, something's going on here because, in, especially in WWE, even with the SummerSlam match, the SummerSlam match I thought was good, but the booking towards it was bad. Like a lot of the times, the booking with the women involved, Bianca, Charlotte, Oscar, that build up, like we got everything building up to that was kind of dragging. The the promos going into SummerSlam where they had the little vignettes for each and one of them, that was dope. So they capitalized on that. We got the big match at SummerSlam. Eos, the new champ. But it's like a lot of the things that we've seen over the past couple months, especially with the tag team division, where we have all these women that are not getting this time. And it's like, why aren't we getting some type of tag team pairing here? Why aren't we getting some consistency, as you as we all said, with Chelsea Green, um, Piper Niven finally coming back, as you explained <laughs> as well with that. It's like we've been asking for her for months. Like what's going on with her? Like she should be a competitor for Rhea. Right now, Rhea still technically doesn't have a challenge, even though it's Raquel Rodriguez kind of kind of battling back from injury. We kind of didn't like how that was booking and maybe that's the hold up, but it's like Rhea Ripley has, hasn't had a real challenger after, since after backlash, right? Like who has she faced? <laughs> like she hasn't, she's been running rush out with the judgment day. She put Wesley through the table on NXT a couple weeks ago. I'm like, what is she doing? But I understand them getting those variations of time, but in terms of consistency in the ring, it hasn't really been there. And it's like, these women are great. There's the, mo this is the most talented women's wrestling we've ever seen in our lives. Like this is the most talented crop of wrestlers, women that can go in the ring. And we're just not getting that. I guess this is more towards the state of AEW where 
you had people like Thunder Rosa, you had people like Britt Baker putting their bodies on the line, Ruby Soho coming up and putting their bodies on the line there in those hardcore matches and drawing a lot of reaction from the crowd. And it's like, now it's like when we went to, uh, me and Lewis went to Blood and Guts, Britt Baker was on there for three minutes. <laughs> she had a three minute match. Chris Statlander had yeah. a three minute match. And it's Before like, the event. these women aren't getting the time on television. Yeah, and, and it's like, these women are not getting time on television to showcase their stories, show what they're actually doing. And it's like, it, it's just a loss right now because it's like, we have the women here. This is the most talented women's wrestling that we've had in, in our lives, as I said before. But it's just like, something's just fallen on short where it's kind of like even that within even, I'm going to say the men's tag team division, but I should say the women's tag team division where it's, okay, we're going to start paying attention to this a little bit. And then all of a sudden it just goes dead cold for whatever reason. And it's like, and especially with all the time that's on television, you have dynamite, you have collision, you have raw, which is three hours, you have SmackDown. And a lot of the times what we've seen over the past couple of weeks is them just reminding us of other storylines and vignettes and stuff like that. And it's like, that can easily be time for women wrestling. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it, it's just like, this should be getting more attention because the actual talent is there. If the talent wasn't there, and if the crop wasn't there, if you had everybody hurt and stuff like that, and I know there are some injuries out there, but it's just like there's enough talent here for us to pay attention to this. Like we want to see these women wrestle. This is, we're, we're not asking for full pay-per-views and stuff like that, like they try to do with Evolution and with Stephanie McMahon. Maybe that's what's missing. Maybe Stephanie's missing. So maybe that's why they're not paying attention to it. But it's just like there's enough talent on the roster to make this go. Like it doesn't have to be like – Two minute matches, three minute matches. They're not getting any time, and it's just like, why are we going backwards with especially all this talent? It doesn't make any sense to me on that end. I think I think it also depends. Also, something I touched. It's like just building more stars, but giving these these women more wins and credibility. Like, let your heels be heels, let your baby faces be baby mm-hmm. faces. Like, okay. I can name off so many people that are on the roster that haven't been used. You got. Candice finally just came back. Same with um, Indy Hartwell. Zia Lee, you don't see. Nikki Cross, you don't see. We just saw, like, Lacey <laughs> Evans, but the Lacey Evans thing is a whole thing in itself. But then it's like Piper <laughs> finally. Just got, just, just, just got the vote. <laughs> yeah. Um, Piper and then, you know, Dan's favorite, Natalia. We haven't seen her little hint of whatever story we were going to get from her, I guess. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Louis, Emma, don't, act, don't, don't act like you miss her, man. You're happy that you don't see her right now. Hey, so, you know what? I Yes, I don't miss her, but when she was hinting at, like, oh, I don't know who I am, I thought I was getting a character <laughs> change finally. Jesus Christ. Um, maybe some new intro music. <laughs> <laughs> But um, intro music isn't going anywhere, man. Uh, it's not going one anywhere. One can dream. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like you I'm just saying. She had a great match with Rhea Ripley. That's all I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Like let these, let these women go and let them show. Like if you cut, if you're giving them two minute matches, like, you're not going to see shit. You're like ah, they're going to be done over. Like who cares? You know, it's just like you got to give them. I don't know if it's just creating more stars or more stories or what, but it's just like it should all start in NXT because all these just, people have I, mostly gone through NXT, and this is like, why is this not continuing? Like we had this whole revolution, and that's that's go. another thing. Like this is yes, this so. is your development system. <laughs> like this is your development system. Like they should be getting that time, and it's just like, yeah. why aren't they? And and it's it just uh, it's lazy booking at a part of it because I'm tired of every women's storyline being, hey, they were friends and now they don't like each other. Like, it doesn't yeah. always have to be that simple. It could just be them, hey, I don't like you. You don't like me. You Wait, have something really? I want. And let's yeah, go. When, like, let's you know, go. Yeah, like, but, it yeah, when it's done properly, it's make. effective. But yeah, but you're right. They do it too much. When it's done, like the feud that they had with um, Cora Jade and Rox- Roxanne Perez. Like I actually, I actually believed, I actually mm-hmm. b- b- believed it because like they actually were friends. Um, they were friends. The only thing I didn't like is that they 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 just rushed it a little bit. But the story 
in of itself was, was believable. Mm-hmm. You can go ahead, Dave. No, but I'm just saying, like, the certain times they do it, like Toxic Attraction. Uh, I can't, I can't remember their names. But when she kicked her head through the door, yeah, I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, "Holy shit!" Because that's how impactful it was, and that yeah. makes people care. Women's wrestling does matter. Like, they can do it right. Like, and especially again, I'll just bring it back to this. Like Charlotte, Oscar, and Bianca Belair. That should have been some of the most entertaining women's wrestling that we've seen in terms of like promos build up mind games whatever the case may be and it wasn't given time a lot of the things just didn't make sense from a standpoint of what they were trying to put on tv and it's just like why are we getting nothing here like is every and then this is why i think like i was like is this something due to the bloodline where they're taking up a lot of the time in terms of storytelling resources um, time on the time on the, the actual show, and it's just like a lot of these things are falling through the cracks, and it looks like the women's division was a part of that, and it's just yeah. unfortunate. Where, and, and on the flip side of that, when we look at Rhea Ripley, the only reason why she's been relevant is because she's running around with the Judgment Day and has been so involved with Dominic and stuff like that, and maybe that's a way to kind of like. Uh, uh, give the roster a little bit time to rejuvenate itself but it's like are you guys actually going to do anything with these women that are on standby until we actually get that type of run and it's like it's weird that as we said carmelo carmelo's out uh, uh alexa bliss is out i know those are two mainstays that they had there but it's just like what are you guys doing with these other women like candace the right indy hartwell just fought rhea ripley on raw but it's like that was a three minute match. <laughs> like, we're not getting anything out of these women long term story wise. Maybe there's a booking match there with Candice LeRae that's going to finally appear, or whatever the case may be. But it's just like, we need something there. We need something. We definitely need something, and something needs to change with, in terms of uh, women getting on time on because it's like there's enough time. And a lot of these times where we have these storylines that fall flat or don't follow up. And it's like, why aren't the women getting those opportunities in those time slots? And yeah, it's just the same old question that we always get, but it's like, as Brian said, we're in the best, we're in the best state of wrestling for women, but we're kind of floundering in terms of the booking for these women right now. And it's just like, that doesn't need to happen. (laughs) That definitely doesn't need to happen. And especially right again, with the talent that they have, they don't need that. Doesn't need to happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's not just the laundry and hockey bone up. And, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. There's, there's, you know what I mean? Talent, it's not just as those as two. Talent goes there. They're so they're so deep uh, in the women's, yeah. in the women's roster. They're, look, they're, they WWE. They clearly have the have the best women's roster in, in all professional wrestling. So when you have when you have all mm-hmm. that talent, all you need to do is provide them with the proper New Japan. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Japan promotion disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure all the okay. over there disagree. <laughs> in ring, in ring wise, they the stardom is, is the best women's promotion ever. In ring, in ring wise, but we're talking about yeah. character, character and story storytelling and actually making money. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just had to make a point. I just wanted to make. I know. A point. I'm just saying. We're, talk, we're actually talking about in ring. I, I, they got that. That that's what. That's why um, Mercedes was there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, um, Royal Rumble. <laughs> I'm I'm holding out hope. Royal Rumble. <laughs> Come back. Uh, Come back. That'd be clutch. Please. That would be clutch. I mean, I mean, if Vince wasn't involved, <laughs> if Vince Rumble. wasn't involved, period, I believe you. But if he's still going to be around, nah. They, never know. Now they, they, they might, they might yeah. now, money. Now, now they did get rid of the other piece of shit, John Laurinaitis. So maybe, so maybe uh, that yeah. might, <laughs> so maybe that might change things. <laughs> but yeah, they just need. They just. I'm hoping that she comes back for the Royal Rumble. But Trinity's doing good in Impact. Um, uh, what's that girl? Drazen Pazazo? I can't remember. Diana Perazzo? Diana Perazzo? Diana yeah. Perazzo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Her. Like, she's that, good in the ring. Like, like, was, like a resident. Uh, was like a bodybuilder. She's huge. Um, I don't know if you know who I'm I talking about. I think she about. left. Jordan Grace? Yeah, I think so. Jordan Grace? Did she leave? Yeah, I think she I just. I think she, I think she left after... Uh, 
Did she be? She left after the slam anniversary. I think that was her last match. Was it hmm. or was it bound for glory? I don't know. I think Florida. she. I think she just left. Jordan Rails. Yeah, she was like a powerhouse. Yep. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, she took a hiatus. I don't know mm. if she's done or she's actually just taking a break. But um, yeah. Mickey James is still going. Hopefully, she comes back in this Trish and Becky Lynch feud. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm still holding out hope for that. No. But um, yeah, that's just. Lewis. <laughs> it's not <laughs> over. Yeah, the you're saying that's still huge. paid. Lewis. Still paged. <laughs> that, 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 that's why I wish, you, I wish you were in the chat, chat on Monday night. When I clearly, when they clearly showed that this feud wasn't over with the double, I know, I know. I had to, I had to watch it the next day, and I was like, "Oh, this is what Brian was talking about." I was like, "God damn it!" It's not over. It is still two on one. It has to be two on two. Once it's two on two, then the feud will be over. Until it's, if it's still going to be two on one, this feud is going to continue. Still waiting for fucking Lita to come back. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm saying if it's Lita, it's a letdown. If it's Mickey James, I'm happy. <laughs> that would be clutch. Mickey, Mickey James about makes that. the most sense. I'm just saying. Yeah. It she, makes she the most make sense. sense. Who's the person who has a long history? I mean, I'll Who's she, the person who has the longest history with Trish right now? It has to be Mickey James, Mickey, who can actually, actually go in the ring. Mickey James, Mickey, James. Mickey James would get the biggest pop. But but storyline wise, Lita makes the most sense. Yeah, actually. that's what I was gonna say. Hey, hey, hey! Sometimes the story has to change. <laughs> oh, really? Sometimes oh, the story. Oh, really? Hey, hey, hey! Oh, hey, really? Hey. Oh, really? <laughs> when, says the man when it's of needed. Story. When, when it's, it's needed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like how you added that. When it's needed. <laughs> oh, now, now, now it's when it's needed. <laughs> when it's needed. <laughs> How about finish the story? This woman's storyline is needed. Finish the story, but in a different nah. manner. Don't do the same thing. We don't, don't need it. We don't need. We don't. We don't need the. We don't need the. We don't need the secret ending. We just need the regular ending. That's oh, going to get the God. job. Done. That's all. We, need. we don't need the predictable <laughs> ending. We don't. We don't. We, we uh, need the prediction. That's what we need. We need the predictability of Cody Rhodes writing his story and getting into WrestleMania. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he can just walk on SmackDown and right, go because, 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 Lewis, because Lewis opened the can of worms, I'm going to just say what I need to say right now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> wow. What is going on with the booking of Karrion Cross right now, man? I swear to God, I almost feel like because of that loss to Jeff Hardy and how he was booked to look like a dominatrix in the very beginning, I almost I almost feel like like oh hold on <laughs> I almost feel like there's still a bad taste in everybody's mouth from that bullshit and they can't get over it. So he so he's been booked this way because of it. And, and if that's the fucking case, what a fucking travesty from what from this from what this guy was when he was in NXT again. I keep, we bring it up week after week about how guys were in NXT, how they are now. We bring it up week after week. Like 90% of their roster is former NXT talent now. So we're going to be bringing it up every single every single week. But to see where Karrion Cross was as being NXT champion, being undefeated, then coming to the main roster, getting that first getting that first loss, getting getting re, getting released, on, which, which, which was a bullshit decision, then they bring him back. They put him in that feud with Drew McIntyre. That feud was kind of uh, kind of underwhelming. Then he then he goes after Rey Mysterio. That feud is underwhelming. Then then he was in the feud with AJ Styles. <laughs> Even that feud was underwhelming. <laughs> like so, and, and you look at these guys: Drew, Rey, he's lost. AJ. Like he's lost. <laughs> I know they've been trying, but it's just like, I, and I don't know if it's because Roman is the champ and he's on SmackDown, so so we can't really get, get his full potential. But if there was anyone that would benefit from going to Monday Night Raw right now, it would be Karrion Cross. I would like to see a Karrion Cross versus Seth Rollins feud. I think it makes I think it makes perfect sense. I think mm. that Karrion Cross would look would, would look very would look very strong, and I think then then you can start to get him back to what he was in in uh, NXT. But since but since that loss, to don't Jeff give Hardy, Lewis any ideas for trades for Cody. 
<laughs> I, I, I'm I, just saying I, anybody can walk into any ideas. show right now. Apparently, <laughs> anybody can walk onto any show. The, the way Karen Cross is, the way Karen Cross is looked in some of these feuds, like I said, you got AJ, you got Ray, you got Drew. So, like I said, they've been they've been trying, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if he's not just not, just not connecting. I don't know if they're setting him up, setting him up for something. I don't know if because Roman is Roman is champion. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just feel like well, he should be farther well, along. Like, it's just like Dan said. It's like even if it's nothing to do with Roman, even if he just won these feuds, it would give him some momentum. Like shit, he probably could have gone after the U.S. title if he wanted to as well. It's like why are you just feuding with people just to feud? You know, okay. it's like there's no. Clear right. direction. You know? If Ray, if Ray is going to be, if Ray is champion now, if you want to go back to that feud with Karrion Cross now, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Now, if now if they put the U.S. title on Karrion Cross and actually have him have a good reign. Okay, now we're going, we're back on track. Yeah. That's what they should but, do. Um, I don't know for him. I don't know if it's like maybe his character is not him because it, I don't know. I think if the, the losing factor is definitely like if he would have be Drew, if he would have. Well, did he be Drew? No, nah, I think Drew. Drew, nah, nah, it was nah, a he, dog he, collar he, match, wasn't it? No, nah, I don't know. Nah, I don't think it was a dog collar match. No, nah, strap it, match. It was it a was, strap yeah, match. I think, was, was, I think it was a strap match. And I think I think Drew won. I don't even remember. I don't even remember. See, that's why I was like, if he would have just kept winning, it would make more sense. Like, oh look, he's taking these dudes out. Boom. Like, but I don't know. You wanna know what happened? He lost to Jeff Hardy, and then they didn't know how to book him <laughs> because they thought he was damaged goods. He left and then came back. He had a lackluster feud with Rey Mysterio. With all due respect, he should have beat Rey Mysterio easily. Yeah. <laughs> the way he yeah. was booked on NXT, the way that Karrion Cross was moveset, his powerhouse, all that stuff, they made him a joke. I remember he was supposed to go after – wasn't he supposed to go after Roman at one point? Yeah, they hinted at that. Wasn't he when like kind of – When he, came back, when he initially movie? came back, yeah, his, his uh, debut, his return, yeah, they, they, mm-hmm. had, they had him say Roman yeah. TikTok. Like – it was the perfect way to come back. Yeah, he's supposed perfect. To be, he was supposed to be on that level, and then he just fell out of it. He didn't even get a match. <laughs> so it's all these, it's just bad booking with him. And it's like he's a good talent. We've seen what he's done on NXT. You guys killed his his run when he initially came up looking like demolition in 2020 in 2020s. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna work, and they tried that and it looked bad. Everything looked bad with from that point standpoint. You made him lose to Jeff Hardy. And I guess the angle was that uh Scarlett was supposed to unleash this new side of him. They didn't even get to that, they didn't even repackage that. She's coming out, she's blowing dust in people's faces. It's not having any effect. He's still losing. <laughs> like, why is he even feuding with AJ right now? There's no point of him like- feuding with AJ and the OC and stuff like that. There's no point. He should right yeah, now, no. as Brian said, the next step, if they're gonna build up this thing, if Austin Theory is gonna be repackaged and go away for a little bit, Harry and Cross should be the United States championship challenger and then eventual champion. That's what we should be doing to build him up. Because at least he at least has a history with Ray Mysterio. He can at least get over. Maybe that sets up a tag team match with Ray and uh uh well, Selena Vega. Versus Scarlet and Karrion Cross and some variation. There's a bunch of things that they can do with that, but in terms of his booking, it just doesn't make any sense because it's like this guy was a badass on NXT and now all of a sudden he's nothing. <laughs> he's yeah. nothing. He's battling he AJ Styles every week and he's, week and he's losing. He was. He was. And it's just like, yeah. why is he? And it kind of reminds me of a. He, he's he's kind of reminds me of a, 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 a Apollo Crews who was booked strong on the Indies and stuff like that. EC3, all these guys that come up, and then all of a sudden it's like, we don't know what to do with you, but you're here. And I guess it's yeah. cool that he's being in these big time feuds, right? With Ray Mysterio, Drew, and AJ and stuff like that. He's getting TV time, but it's like, you guys are not even like AJ doesn't need to win right now. Unless he's like, AJ should be in the main event picture, in my opinion. But yeah, it's like, easily. he's beating up Carrion Cross every week. He doesn't need to do that. <laughs> he doesn't need to do that. There's nothing like. And it's not, and again, it's not even like Karrion Cross is getting the upper hand. He's not, like, not even a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's, it's, bad. it's one of the holes on uh, just booking right now that's kind of just like, what are you doing with this? And it's like, and at a time where it gets into these fall months and stuff like that, where you're kind of carrying, trying to just get to WrestleMania season or whatever the case may be, 
you should be trying to get these other guys involved, especially guys like Karrion Cross, yeah. to be heavy hitters for when you carry on. And he can be a potential guy that faces a Bobby Lashley or an Edge or – uh, carrying cross versus edge probably would have been a better mind game type of feud than Sheamus right now. Whatever. I feel yeah. like Sheamus is heading to a heel turn with his battle with edge, but in terms of like if carrying cross is <clears throat> given that opportunity to actually book, there could have been a real angle there between those two, which I think is another missed opportunity, but it's just like all these things for carrying cross. And it's just like, He's losing every week. <laughs> it's kind of the same. Well, I don't want to say they're the same thing because Finn Balor is being featured in a stronger position, but it's just like both of these guys are being featured poorly <laughs> right now. Yeah. And, and especially with Karrion Cross, it's like, I, I don't know why he can't get on the right path. I don't know why it's so hard and so difficult. And maybe it's the bloodline storyline kind of holding everything into hold right now, but it's just like he should be getting an opportunity. <laughs> That's all I want to say about that. See, you we need new challengers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. I, I don't think I've ever disagreed with that, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've ever disagreed. You just that. want one person one thing we've to win agreed. the same way again. Oh, no, no, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. You just want to repeat. That's not true. To say it. Did, you want to did repeat. Cody Rose, did, Cody, did Cody Rhodes win yeah. Did Cody Rhodes win at WrestleMania? You want to repeat with a different no, outcome. So Sorry. that's not wanting to say You want to repeat with a different outcome. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not a repeat. Then, then it's not a repeat. But it is. Then it's not a repeat. Brian, do you want the same it's thing to happen again? <laughs> the exact same way? Um, It's not the exact I, same way. It is, though. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of on the fence he either way Rumble, about it. He goes because to I WrestleMania. Can't be, because I can't see a way for, for them to book the Royal Rumble to make it more special than when, when he won it last year, unless he comes out as no, at number one. But you can't do that because Rhea already did it this year. They they don't do it in back to back years. So I don't know. So I don't know. How, I don't know how you would do how you would do that. It so has to be one through ten. I told you it has to be one through ten. He can win at number three. <laughs> he can win at number three. He can do the Ric Flair. Boring. <laughs> Boring. Do the Ric Flair. No, I think about uh, it. How many? How many years? I'm how many saying, years? I'm just how many years has it been since that '92 World Rumble? Twenty? Nope. Nope. Thirty. Thirty-two. Thirty. Thirty-two years. Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, thirty-one. Thirty-one. Yeah, I, wouldn't be, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they if they uh, tried to emulate that. <laughs> Have no, him out number, I'm just saying. Out number I'm just three. saying. Number just three. The bell. WWE. Just ring the there's bell. Your, your storyline. Just ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Have him, as, as I said, you can have him. Go through, you can have him go through the bloodline. Just have him go through the bloodline. <laughs> Yeah, and so just he could just walk on SmackDown. Guys. He could just walk on the SmackDown, go through the bloodline. Boom, yeah. he's at Mania. I mean, I, I know you guys just heard the bell. Yes, Bobby Lee the Royal Rumble. <laughs> it's the, se- the well, second and the third Rumble. Yes, that's how we can do it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, but um, I guess we can wrap this one up. Man. That would do it for this episode of Ring Takes. As we continue the storyline, we're going to see what happens with SmackDown, of course, and the continuation of Raw and AEW. And we're heading closer to All In at some point. I um, believe we got to go to a Bushi Hangman page. Shinsuke for champ. Oh, yes, we did Shinsuke. I don't like the way they booked that, but hopefully Shinsuke pulls mm-hmm. it off. And I did read what he actually said in Japanese, somehow. and I was actually yeah, really so good. I. I don't know yeah. if you read it. Yeah, I, so I, I read, read, read that, Dan. Too. No, I didn't see it. Yeah. You should read it. It's actually, it, no. it's actually really good what he said. It's like, dude, right. why can't you just have this man say this stuff in English? <laughs> or do like you said, give us the translators. Well, you know, they, they like to be... <clears throat> I've said I said that weeks ago. If this is going to be an issue, just have somebody be a translator. And everybody looked at me and said, "You can't do that." <laughs> but I'm just no, like, no. in this day and age, I think it will be fine. <laughs> I feel like for it him, fine. it would, it would I, add. And first, for Shinsuke, I feel like it would add a great his character. To his character as a yeah. heel, as a heel character. Yeah, yeah, like that would have been dope. Like, just do it. Like, I need to be on the booking team. There we go. That's <laughs> I need to be on the booking team. 
rather than just taking the booking information and making picks. <laughs> oh. And being be incorrect. Stars. And being incorrect. Stop cheating, lose. <laughs> I'll be oh. I'll be making stars. Sorry. I'll, I'll turn um, off my magneto, be... my uh, Professor X powers, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> please. I'm, I'm down in the standings. <laughs> I'm down bad right now. I hope I can turn it around at payback. Um, but that will do it for this episode of Ring Takes, uh, episode 28. This will be on Spotify. This will be our first episode that will be on Spotify. Hey, and listen to yeah, yeah, yeah. I am New that. Yes. on that. I am doing that because I have to. So this will be on Spotify. This will be on listening platforms. I will make this a short and put that out there and upload this as soon as I can. Um, but that will do it for this episode of episode 28. Um, yeah, that's it. That's going to be the end of it. Um, ring the bell. The tight. We're trying to do, figure that out. No, <laughs> why would you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> now it's inadmissible. <laughs> so, uh, I gotta, like, I, I gotta figure it out. What's the, what's the ending? We didn't. Is it? Is we it should, uh, we Stop, should end up uh, doing a, a vote on like IG or something. But like, what should our end catchphrase be? Ring the bell. Call the match. <laughs> Or... Uh, I'll, do I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll pull up a poll. I'll put up a poll. Cool. I'll put it on Facebook. I'll put it on Instagram. Yep. TikTok, whatever. However, these platforms are. Uh, but we'll figure it out. But um, thank you guys for joining me. That was as always. And until next time. All right. So ring the bell.